I'm Dr. Jason DeLeon. And I'm Dr. Kurt French. As archaeology professors, we get calls year-round from people who think they found historical objects in their backyards and attics. I had a letter that was written by George Washington. I think I found the treasure of the Knights Templar. So when school's out, we hit the road to answer as many calls as we can and discover what's real and what's just legend. One thing's for sure, we'll always uncover a great story wow. and maybe even change some history along the way. As archaeologists, we never place value on objects or artifacts of any kind. And the same goes for a coordinate that could have been owned by Louis Armstrong. Something like that is absolutely priceless. The music, the food, the people. We're going to gain so much weight on this one. Oh, yeah. And now we're off to meet another caller in the heart and soul of New Orleans. Hello, Kirk, Jason. This is Ted Bro. I've got something really interesting that I think is going to stump you. The objects of interest are two old absinthe fountains. So if you think you're up to the challenge, come on down to the French Quarter and let's see what you've got. Hmm. Alcohol, huh? An alcohol-related research project? Today we're on Bourbon Street to hang out in a bar named after the pirate Jean Lafitte. Story has it he got wasted here with Andrew Jackson as they planned the Battle of New Orleans over shots of absinthe. Absinthe is a liqueur invented in Switzerland in the early 19th century, consumed by famous artists such as Picasso, Hemingway, Degas. There have been reports that absinthe was causing things like epileptic seizures, psychosis, and even death. Absinthe was outlawed from 1912 to 2007. It's recently been legalized, so I'm very excited about the possibility of getting to try absinthe for the first time. You must be Ted. Ted Bro. I'm, I'm Jason. This is my life coach, Kirk. <laughs> Kirk. Okay, nice to meet Ray you. Ray Bordelon. Ray Bordelon. Basically, you know, here in New Orleans, absinthe goes back to the 1830s. And this venue in particular was a cornerstone of absinthe in the city. Absinthe is very high in alcohol content. We're looking at like 70% alcohol. Compare that to about 40% alcohol for something like bourbon whiskey. It gives you kind of an idea of what kind of oomph it's got. You never drink absinthe straight. You'd always add ice water to absinthe. And basically, what the patron would do was balance the spoon on top of the glass, put a sugar cube on top, and slowly turn this valve until water would drip rapidly and dissolve the sugar cube in the glass. You guys are incredibly passionate about absinthe. How did that come about? A colleague of mine mentioned absinthe in a passing comment. Suddenly it registered, yeah, absinthe, what exactly was that? And his response to me was, you know, it was that green liquor that made people crazy. And that became a source of mystery, and I actually uh, became the first person, as far as I know, to ever analyze samples of vintage absinthe using modern scientific techniques, where I found nothing that was poisonous or deleterious. And that inspired me to help put a group together to overturn the ban on absinthe here in the United States, which we did in 2007. Ted Bro is the most passionate person I've ever met about absinthe, which I, I respect. I, I, have, I have a similar fascination for tequila. One big mystery that confronted me right away was right here in the old absinthe house. And that mystery is right here. Wow. And the mystery is nowhere on the planet do we find an absinthe fountain that looks like this. So you have two, I see you have another one over there as well, right? Right. The absinthe house itself was built about 1806. Legend has it that Mr. Ferrier, who was the bartender, took over the bar in 1874. He supposedly brought these here. From where, we don't know. The question begs as to where exactly did they come from, and maybe these fountains were not necessarily for absence. Because that's a lot of where. This was like a corner ballroom. Why would something this fancy be in a corner ballroom? How many photos do you have of this fountain? Um, as a matter of fact, I have a few right here. This one is about 1902. This one is about 1925. And you can see in all of them, the fountains are there on the bar. That hasn't changed. Ray and Ted have been studying these objects for a really long time, and they still seem to be a, a bit dumbfounded. So what we're going to do next is take some photographs, take a look at some of the material that it's made of, look at some of the construction techniques, and also see if we can trace it back to some place like France or Switzerland, where we know absolutely was really big in the 19th century. Like the mystery of absinthe itself was surrounded by mystique and myth, and we've cleared the air on that. The mystery behind these fountains deserves to be unraveled. I really love this story, and with the help of a local historian, we're going to dig up some answers as to what these fountains actually are and hopefully where they came from.